Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, The Mangler. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in a laundry service. While working, one of the lady workers named Sherry tightens the belts so they can put more clothes on the iron machine. However, she accidentally injures herself while twisting the lever. With blood in her hands, she splashes it into the tread. Suddenly, an old icebox comes flying toward her. Sparks and smoke flashes when the icebox and the blood come into contact with the machine. The people in the laundry service are all shocked by the commotion. Even though injured, Sherry says that she is fine. However, Mr. Gartley, the owner of the laundry service, feels no remorse about the incident and dares the workers to continue working despite the trouble. In the next scene, the delivery men attempt to deliver the icebox to a certain address. While driving, they encounter the town officer in the middle of the road, almost getting into a car crash. In the laundry shop, the old lady is having trouble taking her pills. Suddenly, the foreman comes and screams, making the old lady startled. Because of it, she accidentally throws her pills on the moving tread. Trying to take the pills back, the old lady stretches her arms and uses them to reach the pills. However, the shield inexplicably lifts up, pulls the old lady's arm inside, and is eventually followed by her whole body. The old lady screams at the top of her dying lungs, while the tread slowly crushes and folds her like a blanket. Sherry tries her best to save the old lady, but it's already too late, as the machine mauls the old lady to death. Meanwhile, the officer gives the delivery men tickets for their violations. Moreover, the officer receives information about the tragedy in the laundry shop. The officer feels bad as he witnesses the grief of the old lady's colleagues. To investigate the tragedy, the officer comes inside the laundry shop. The officer asks the foreman what happened, but he cannot say anything because he's still in shock. To check the body, the officer goes to the back of the machine to look at it. He's shocked and disgusted when he sees the bloody remains of the old lady. More reinforcements come to the scene to investigate the death. They try starting the machine again to pinpoint safety issues. After finding that the machine works perfectly fine, the other officers conclude that the old lady's death is purely accidental. In the next scene, the officer tells everything about what happened in the laundry shop to his brother-in-law, a demonologist named Mark. After hearing the story, Mark says the machine is called a mangle. The officer feels stressed as he recollects the bloody incident. He complains about why the officers acted as if nothing happened and allowed the machine to continue running. The next day, the stream hose breaks and comes loose, burning the lady workers. After that, Mr. Gartley approaches the hairy worker and lectures her. He dares the hairy woman to take a bath and keep him company afterward. Meanwhile, the officer receives information about another incident at the laundry. Mark goes with the officer to investigate the incident. They go to the hospital to interview one of the victims. As they go to the room, Mark and the officer see the worker heavily burned and crying in pain. The victim says that all the weird incidents happen when Sherry accidentally splashes her blood on the machine and that since the machine tasted blood, it liked it and never stopped terrorizing the workers. Mark says he has something important to show the officer when they get home. Quickly, Mark takes a book and says that he suspects a demon could possess the machine. The officer finds it ridiculous, but Mark encourages him to open his mind. Still, the officer gets angry, saying that everything Mark said was bullshit and not real. In the next scene, the hairy woman investigates the bloody machine. Suddenly, the machine inexplicably lifts again and pulls the girl inside. Luckily, the foreman comes to save her hairy life, and she only gets an injury. Meanwhile, Mark still encourages the officer to open his mind and read the mystical books. Mark says things like demons and witches are real and part of the world's nature. He explains that the commonality of demonic spells is the virgin's blood. This reveals that the virgin blood of Sherry could be the trigger of a demonic spell. To ensure, Mark dares the officer to find out if Sherry is really a virgin. However, the officer finds it ridiculous, saying that it's inappropriate to ask if somebody is a virgin. Still, Mark is serious and wants to talk with the victim to ensure she is a virgin. With Mark's stubbornness, the officer agrees to proceed with Mark's theory. Not long after, the dude takes the car and goes to Sherry's shelter. The officer rings the doorbell and the girl greets them. Sherry welcomes the two of them into the house. Proceeding with the plan, the officer starts interviewing the girl. Sherry says every specific thing that happened during the incident, including the information about when she accidentally splashed her blood on the machine. While recollecting the sad memories, Sherry cries and the officer goes near her to console her, but without using his muscles. As the brothers attempt to leave, Mark tries to ask the woman if she is a virgin. The officer takes hold of Mark and pulls him out of the house. While driving, the officer complains about Mark's behavior towards the poor girl. Suddenly, a police car comes in the middle of the road. It reveals that something wrong happened in one of the town's houses. 
the officer goes out of the car to check the commotion. The officer's colleague says that a boy has been missing throughout the day, and they found him suffocated and dead. Meanwhile, Mark inspects the icebox lingering just outside of the house. Mark shows the officer the icebox, and they realize that it's the same icebox that almost kicked Sherry in the laundry shop. Due to frustration, the officer kicks the icebox repeatedly. Mark says that the case could be a transference of evil. Suddenly, they hear a noise inside the icebox. To check, they open the box and find birds inside of it. As Mark stretches his hand to save the bird, the icebox suddenly closes and traps half of Mark's body. Fortunately, the officer is there to help. With his strength, he successfully pulls Mark out of the icebox. The officer takes a hammer and uses it to smash the icebox. While taking his frustration on it, he hits the top part. Suddenly, a tornado comes out of the box, and sparks and lighting inexplicably occur. After Mark chants something, the tornado and the sparks disappear instantly. The officer and the people scream out loud as they witness a ridiculous thing. After the inexplicable situation, Mark and the officer drive away from the scene. At this point, the officer now believes his brother-in-law that a demon could possess the icebox and the mangler itself. Mark says that if they want to defeat the demon, they should be careful and conduct the right exorcism. As the officer pretends to go to his bed, he escapes and takes his car to investigate for more. The officer then goes to the morgue to check the remains of the dead boy. He asks the staff about the cause of the deaths of the mangler and the icebox victims. After a short talk, the officer dares the staff to get out of the room so he can do some thinking. Suddenly, the officer's photographer friend comes to the scene and takes a photograph of the officer with the dead bodies. The photographer confides that he's dying of sickness. The officer returns to the laundry shop to confront the mangler. To trespass his way, he climbs the pipe and enters through the nearby window. Not long after, the officer finds himself right in front of the deadly machine. To rest, he sits on the mangler and likes his cigarette. However, his solitude is quickly disturbed when the mangler inexplicably moves and pulls his clothes inward. He tries using his dexterity to escape. With no luck, he shoots his clothes to disconnect himself from the machine. Luckily, the clothes rip apart, and the officer comes out alive. However, his gun is eaten by the mangler. The foreman comes into the scene to check on the officer. The officer asks the foreman where Mr. Gartley is, but the foreman replies that he is out of town. Not believing every word the foreman said, the officer forces his way to the upper floor to look for Mr. Gartley. As the foreman tries to stop the officer, the officer punches him in the face so hard. As the officer successfully goes upstairs, he finds Mr. Gartley in his room. Without hesitation, the officer screams and dares Mr. Gartley to shut the mangler down before it hurts more people. However, Mr. Gartley disagrees with the idea and says that shutting it down is a bad career move. Angry, Mr. Gartley says that he will have the officer suspended for illegal trespassing. While they carry on a heated argument, Mr. Gartley inexplicably says that he could not shut down the mangler because there is a piece of him in that machine, and he also says that sacrifices are sometimes necessary for life. Not long after the officer exits the building, Mr. Gartley talks with the foreman and he tells the story of the mangler. It reveals that the same machine has killed Mr. Gartley's daughter before, which is also why Mr. Gartley's legs are dysfunctional. However, Mr. Gartley insists that people should make sacrifices if they want to be successful. Mr. Gartley contacts the sheriff to get the officer suspended for his actions. In the next scene, Mr. Gartley shows the hairy woman the death certificate of his daughter. It reveals that Mr. Gartley has a deal with the demon inside the machine, and he says that the hairy woman will join them in the club. Meanwhile, the foreman plans to dismantle the mangler to prevent it from killing more people. Suddenly, Sherry comes to the scene and says she wants to talk with Mr. Gartley. Suddenly, as the foreman is doing something to the machine, the mangler pulls his arm and kills him. Mr. Gartley comes out of his room and feels no remorse for what's happening. To save the foreman, the other worker uses an axe to cut the foreman's arm, disconnecting it to the mangler, while Sherry runs for her life in a car. On the other side, the officer sees his old photographer friend dying of his sickness. Before running out of time, the photographer says he has a present for the officer inside his office. He also says the officer needs to exorcise his demons and not let them possess his soul. Not long after, the photographer throws out blood and dies. Going to the photographer's room, Mark and the officer see pictures and news articles about the incidents in the town. Mark sees a package with the officer's name written. He opens the package and witnesses news articles about the missing women in their town, including Mr. Gartley's daughter. Interestingly, they all disappear on their 16th birthday. This reveals that in exchange for wealth and influence, the officer and Mark realize that Mr. Gartley and the town elders sacrificed their 16-year-old virginal daughters to the mangler. 
Mr. Gartley intends to do the same to Sherry, to fulfill his part of his agreement with the devil. Knowing that, the officer contacts Sherry to warn her of the danger. He instructs Sherry to stay inside the house to protect her from Mr. Gartley. It is now only less than an hour until Sherry's 16th birthday. Mark and the officer are running out of time to save the poor girl. Meanwhile, Mr. Gartley comes to the scene and aggressively greets Sherry for her upcoming birthday. The hairy woman comes to the room and hits Sherry from behind, making her fall down. While on the ground, Mr. Gartley forces Sherry to swallow a medicine to make her sleep. Meanwhile, Mark and the officer are now preparing for an exorcism. Mark instructs everything they need to do to make the exorcism successful and to save Sherry. On the other hand, Mr. Gartley and the hairy woman put Sherry in the mangler to prepare for the virginal sacrifice. Just as the mangler is about to swallow Sherry, Mark and the officer come to the scene and bring Sherry to safety. While they are all fighting, the hairy woman is swallowed by the mangler and is flattened to death. Suddenly, Mr. Gartley rises and tries to save the hairy woman, but he's already too late. The officer quickly punches Mr. Gartley, resulting in the mangler pulling Mr. Gartley and folding the evil old man into four parts. Meanwhile, Mark is already conducting an exorcism to cast away the demon from the machine. The officer helps in the exorcism by pouring holy water into the mangler. However, they find that their exorcism is not working and the demon is just gaining even more power. At last, the machine shuts down and the officer celebrates their success. The officer takes more pills to calm himself. However, as described in the book, the Deadly Nightshade, also known as the Hand of Glory, is the main component of the pills. Mark realizes that the exorcism was really ineffective because the machine unintentionally took the same pills when the mangler killed the old lady before and that the demon is still alive and more powerful than ever. Suddenly, the mangler comes alive and starts shedding chunks of metal and rising like a ferocious demon as if it had a mind of its own. The raging mangler now follows the trio as they sprint through the shop. While the officer and Sherry escape, the mangler catches and rips Mark apart, killing him brutally. Sherry realizes that the demon wants her, so she decides to surrender herself to the mangler, but the officer quickly comes and pulls her away from the machine. They rush to get away, but when the machine tries to reach them, they fall through a huge manhole into the sewer. The officer and Sherry escape as the machine moves back and becomes still. The officer receives a letter from his late photographer friend, warning him not to trust anyone in the town who lacks a body part, because the demonic mangler now controls them. The officer visits Sherry to ensure her disposition. To his great disbelief, he finds that Sherry has replaced Mr. Gartley as the new demonic owner of the laundry shop, and that the machine has returned to its original location in the shop and resumed its everyday functions. Sherry has also lost her ring finger due to her encounter with the mangler. This implies that the demon might now possess Sherry. The officer discards the flowers he had given her and finally leaves the shop. This scene reveals that the terror of the demonic mangler is far from over, and the demon has completely taken over Sherry's mind. This Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.